since our program has changed and now I would like to give word over to our last speaker and ta uh, Andres Vasilievs who is going to talk to you about how to prepare uh, data if you have some and of course we can just uh, continue these discussions over coffee after the end of his presentation and uh, I think the additional work that we had planned for today we'll, we'll have to cancel it otherwise the day will be too long and actually uh, will be uh, about the practical aspects of participating in this uh, uh, coordination activity and uh, oh yeah I need this one um, so uh, again uh, uh, just to repeat the main message but in, in uh, showing you in this graphical form uh, the uh, uh, generic uh, uh, dependence of uh, uh, machine translation quality on the volume of data that you have on the uh, horizontal as it's uh, a number of uh, 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 words or segments what, what are provided for training of machine translation and on the vertical as it's, it's a measurement of machine translation quality using a so-called blue score or it's automated measurement how good is uh, empty quality and uh, uh, you can see that for domain specific translation if you have domain specific data then you can get uh, significantly better uh, machine translation quality if you have domain specific data and also uh, the more data you have you can reach uh, uh, improvements in MT quality faster and this uh, blue line it's uh, general language translation it's much more difficult and uh, uh, currently uh, performance of general language uh, MT systems is worse than specific systems and also the data needs are, are bigger so the, uh, for, for specific translation needs uh, domain specific systems uh, are the best solution and what 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 data is needed basically yeah all all kind of textual data what contains words and of course it's uh, parallel data uh, documents with their translations uh, but what is in uh, translated speeches reports web pages brochures whatever and uh, for training MT systems actually uh, also monolingual data is used for generating so-called language models what are used uh, for systems to to like validate or statistically analyze uh, which of the translation hypotheses would be like uh, the best candidate for, for um, uh, target language uh, translation. So yeah, the most valuable source of data is uh, uh, translations uh, and, um, uh, uh, and these translations are, are in many different forms and uh, documents and usually if uh, in practice what we see in different <coughs> institutions we do have uh, documents in PDFs, in doc, uh, doc format, in open document formats, also in Excel spreadsheets, uh, RTF files and uh, XML data and HTML, so large variety of different formats and uh, it may be challenging for you to extract and use that data for uh, uh, and to get parallel data out of uh, hundreds of documents with translations uh, but this is uh, the task of our consortium and the following activities what what we will fulfill to extract that data and to clean and process the data so don't worry too much about the format of the data all kind of formats uh, are or Trados, it's, this is the best possible format because it's already aligned. Uh, t uh, TBX and uh, XLIF files, uh, TMX, uh, XLIF files, and, and uh, terminology data in TBX format on in, uh, or even in Excel spreadsheets. Yeah, actually, here we focus more on, on uh, textual data, uh, but also terminology resources, glossaries, lexicons, taxonomies. Uh, like translations uh, of institution names and uh, and titles uh, and uh, positions uh, are also very useful to uh, adapt MT for for particular use. 
um, for, for example, this uh, system uh, what uh, Richards demonstrated uh, and is uh, used in, uh, for e-government in Latvia was a special activity to, to agree on how to call these institutions in, in English because uh, in practice several different translations are used. And but by implying machine translation to use this like semi-standardized translation, we can make sure that machine translation at least know what's the best uh, and uh, translation of this. So, and uh, uh, with uh, and technology and ontology resources are also very important. And um, um, so, uh, where can you find this data? Yeah, of course. Uh, there's uh, a lot of data that's already published or made available online uh, in different formats. Uh, uh, but there's also, let's call it invisible data, what's stored in your archives in uh, uh, data and document systems that are not easily accessible for external, from, uh, uh, for external partners, but uh, uh, could actually be much bigger than than uh, internal data, and uh, uh, as uh, Margit already mentioned, one one uh, typical opportunity what we do see is that uh, public institutions outsource a lot of translation to translation companies, translation providers, and also freelancers. And uh, usually we get back just translation of the documents. And if I need a new version, new document, we we uh, sometimes pay double price because. Uh, uh, those companies that do that translation, they, they keep translation memories. They do not need to translate everything, just new segments. And uh, what is my, my strong advice to you? Uh, check your agreements with uh, 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 translation companies when you outsource and put uh, a clause uh, requiring uh, uh, to, to return back also translation memories. Uh, in uh, TMX or uh, XLIF format, and uh, uh, also clarifying IPR rights, your rights uh, uh, to use uh, these memories for whatever purpose, because you have paid for this. Anyway, yeah, um, just uh, this is a uh, generic illustration, uh, specialists. Uh, I believe that we do have so much data on the online on the web, but uh, uh, we sometimes underestimate that much more data is available in with in internal repositories and databases. And by some estimations, 96% of digital data is 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 uh, in this deep web, what's not uh, available uh, online or is uh, uh, protected with uh, password access. Um, when uh, um, when you uh, co collect and uh, take care about uh, uh, with language resources, uh, then uh, uh, you have to like understand the basic requirements for for the life cycle of these resources uh, to to have some kind of uh, formal or informal data management plan in place. And uh, this was also raised during the panel discussion. For example, if you just mix all translation memories in, in one big database, the poor translator has to choose from 200 different uh, suggestions coming out. But if you have a good metadata attached to every file and you see, oh, this is old one, outdated, and this is a new one, you can easily select and pick which translation memories should be used for which translation task and which to provide for MT system and which may be out too obsolete to be usable. And so uh, this is like generic uh, cycle of uh, specification, like understanding what kind of uh, data you have, production, collecting, preparing, validation, looking that uh, what you, uh, uh, you intended you really uh, have uh, collected, uh, sharing and distributing, and when important part is maintenance and preservation, what sometimes is overlooked, and for example, some institutions which store data on, on uh, DVD discs or CDs, now when they, a few years later, try to access that data, they are not readable anymore, yeah? So it's uh, storing and preservation is is important uh, aspect. Uh, 
Um, and by the way, the best way how to preserve is to share when you have many <laughs> other copies around. Um, and uh, here you can see in this uh, illustration or the graphical depiction uh, how, how uh, in this workflow, how we can help in this ARC consortium. So uh, the first step, identifying and selecting the data. You, you, you know the best, what data do you have? Uh, uh, but we can uh, help uh, in, in uh, determining legal status for a for, uh, for lot of documents like uh, legal acts, it's, it's very clear. Most of uh, public institution information is covered by PSI directive, uh, but there could be cases where it's difficult to uh, assess uh, the legal status, is it shareable or not, and uh, in ELRC we do have a legal help desk, what you can call or write, what will help you uh, uh, to assess uh, with data. And also for the data where you need some additional work, uh, like uh, Im improve your agreements with um, translation companies or uh, other kind, or, or get a license, uh, then uh, uh, again uh, uh, our consortium uh, uh, can help you in this. And uh, a consortium partner, ELDA, European Language Data Association, has uh, the best experience in Europe uh, in, in these areas. We are dealing with uh, legal aspects of language resources for, uh, from the previous millennium. Uh, and uh, when uh, some techniques can be very useful. Uh, uh, there was uh, also a discussion about uh, uh, private personal data. Personal data, of course, could not be shared in, in the original form. But if you apply techniques like anonymization, uh, replacing person names with uh, generic uh, 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 linguistic structures or placeholders, uh, uh, then uh, it also could be very valuable and useful. And then we can uh, help with uh, processing and uh, uh, preparing data. So, yeah, this is actually uh, basically what I already told you. Uh, you can look in on, on different sites where do you have the data and when uh, what uh, pretty much suggest is to, to yeah, implement with basic data management policies and uh, one of the basic things is to like describe what you have to have some basic metadata uh, uh, related to all, all your data resources or repositories and uh, uh, in library world and in language resource world, uh, uh, the format for this metadata, uh, the most used format is Dublin Core format, um, and there are many fields, but not of not all of them are um, um, mandatory or uh, necessary in most of the practical applications. So some uh, in, in the red color, some basic fields, what we recommend to use are highlighted. Uh, but of course, the more metadata you have, the uh, easier it is later to manage with the data. And when uh, about with, there are of course a lot of technical aspects. Uh, and one approach you, you can provide uh, data in, in the original format that you have. And when uh, uh, the consortium will take care of processing and cleaning with data, or we also can help and assist you in this process. So as a result of such work, you also will 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 get uh, uh, parallel data uh, uh, for for your immediate use, and so uh, this this cleaning uh, uh, is is usually done by all kind of different tools. For example, for machine training machine translation engines, you have to clean all the formatting aspects, encodings, uh, tags. Uh, uh, and so on um, before uh, you align data or extract uh, uh, sentences and uh, align those sentences and segments and, and when use those for statistical algorithms. Uh, and when uh, validation aspect, uh, what, what we see in practice that uh, sometimes uh, uh, 
Uh, the typical problem, one typical problem is a mix of different language. What you have, you, you think that you have uh, one source and one target language, but uh, if you have uh, 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 use with uh, validation tools, you can filter out and in, um, in uh, um, what we saw in many practical situations where many other language uh, content mixed in and that uh, that is very bad for empty engines where we, we can learn uh, strange things from uh, from uh, if different language content is mixed in and uh, yeah and packaging and delivering data yeah it's uh, I will tell a bit later uh, about this uh, more uh, for mm, one uh, technique what uh, we use in uh, in the consortium but what we uh, also uh, provide to you is uh, let's and t technologies uh, what were developed uh, by Tilda and several academic institutions uh, it's a platform like machine translation factory that could uh, process raw data like uh, word documents or excel spreadsheets or other kind of documents uh, align the, those uh, documents, extract parallel sentences, align those, and uh, uh, process for, for machine translation needs. And uh, if, uh, if you have raw data, what, what you want to process yourself, uh, uh, one way how you can do that is also ask um, for the access to this platform. We will provide you with a password. You can log in you will get your online repository on this platform and when you can upload your documents and uh, the platform will automatically generate uh, aligned data out of that and we will uh, give you that data back on the one condition but you also share that data with uh, uh, European Commission. Uh, yeah, this is actually the result what you can get out of the system. Align a text in this example, it's uh, English and Greek. So we also deal with different scripts and alphabets. Uh, another service what could be useful uh, for your use is uh, a task platform terminology. Uh, task stands for terminology as a service. Uh, this is an online platform that could be used in terminology work. If you want to standardize terms and uh, name identities that are used in your institution or in cooperation with other institutions, you again can use this online platform where you can upload your documents and uh, by using statistical algorithms, this platform will mark term, term candidates and name identities uh, that you can ex get back in uh, Excel spreadsheet or uh, edit in the online form uh, and uh, in such a way understand what kind of terminology is used in your institution and the good thing is that this uh, also uh, integrated with uh, YAT and other terminology resources and for those terms what are already standardized uh, uh, standard uh, uh, translations from uh, terminology databases will, will be provided so this could be quite useful for your work uh, and again this uh, terminology data coming out of this uh, uh, will be very useful for machine translation to adapt it to particular domain. The easiest strategy how to adapt machine translation to particular domain is to supply domain specific terminology. Uh, yeah, actually I already mentioned these uh, legal issues so that uh, we help to de determine legal status uh, uh, help to understand whether you can apply techniques like anonymization if if the data is uh, uh, sharing is restricted for uh, uh, and includes personal data and whether that uh, that resource is under PSI directive uh, uh, yeah, mm, and these model licensing agreements, again, if you uh, sign license uh, agreements with uh, uh, third parties, then it's very good to take these model agreements and standard, uh, uh, clo include standard clauses to make sure that you get the maximum rights and um, uh, uh, for, for uh, 
future use of uh, the results. Okay, I already mentioned the data anonymization. Uh, you know, and uh, actually, the purpose of these techniques is to make sure that uh, uh, is uh, uh, after applying these techniques that its uh, uh, data is not reverse engineerable, that you cannot uh, some kind uh, uh, figure out uh, who is actually behind that information and. Uh, uh, these placeholders are generic enough. And this, of course, are language-specific tools um, what, what are necessary for this. Uh, yeah. And uh, for maintenance and preservation, as, as I said, sharing is the best strategy. And uh, here uh, uh, in Estonia, Estonian Language Source Center is uh, uh, Pro provides that service and facilities uh, to, to share data uh, to, and maintain and keep that data and uh, um, uh, this repository what is created by ELREC and European Open Data Portal is European uh, uh, wide uh, repository for all, all the data collected. And again here we uh, will help you in this uh, process. Uh, and yeah, the success of these activities uh, fully depends on, on your interests, your activity. And uh, again, uh, uh, for, for languages uh, like Estonian or my native Latvian, uh, we, uh, it's even more important for some other languages to like match the level that other languages uh, have already achieved because there are more speakers, more data available. But we also have uh, quite a lot of data hidden what should be and could be digged out. And you, uh, you are very welcome to visit uh, uh, ELREC uh, portal. Its website is e uh, address is easy, lrcoordination.eu, and all the information is there. Uh, and uh, uh, um, you can uh, submit data to through this portal. Uh, actually, I this uh, form or repository will will go live in in a few days. But uh, this is just a sc uh, screenshot of the data form that will be integrated. So uh, um, our partners, uh, ILSP has developed this um, uh, catalog where you can see what uh, other institutions have uh, already provided, what data, and upload uh, your, your data. It it depends. How do you feel more comfortable? Uh, if you uh, are open to share data immediately, like <laughs> tonight, you're very, very welcome to send send it by email. Yeah, just if. Just let's uh, take one example. You you have uh, a folder with with. Uh, Word documents, uh, documents in Word or PDF format uh, with translations, uh, like two parallel documents. Yeah, what you can do is to archive with with uh, zip, for example, in in one file. If it's not very large and you are willing to share immediately, what would be very nice, uh, you are very welcome to send it by email. I'll go to the website and where's email provided. Well, if uh, you will do that uh, in, in a few days when there will be also online form available where you can uh, upload to this online form. Then uh, uh, DJ Connect is also thinking if you do not feel comfortable for some reason, there could be some specific uh, reasons to share with uh, a consortium, through consortiums, through intermediaries, uh, then probably there will be option provided to send data directly to DigiConnect uh, in those specific cases. 
Uh, and uh, yeah. So the website is still active. So yeah. there's an email address. Yeah, this email address. Uh, and this is if you have a uh, uh, date what you are already uh, willing and ready to share. But there could be many situations with, where you, you want to participate, but uh, you are not sure about legal status, or the, you are not sure whether this data is uh, usable for MT, probably it's not uh, uh, is, uh, clean enough, uh, have uh, 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 different languages mixed in, in, in uh, documents, or, or and so on, then uh, uh, yeah, please uh, contact uh, our consortium and we will provide this technical service. Uh, to, to deal with these technical aspects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, help desks. And you can call to this phone, uh, send web form, um, or um, uh, email and uh, uh, get support from the help desk. Uh, and uh, if uh, for those institutions who are more involved in language resource work and would want to uh, 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 have engineers or technical capacity and interest to, to process data uh, in-house. Uh, again, we can help you with tools for anonymization, for data extraction, for, for alignment of data, for cleaning and, and validation of data. So we are at your service. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. So, uh, um, and uh, we uh, very much uh, would like to encourage you to take part in this, this activity. And as Sila said, uh, we will be happy to contact you or uh, feel free to contact us. And there will be other events uh, like conference. Uh, uh, this year uh, and uh, other events and uh, we also are very interested to hear your feedback uh, 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 about this workshop and uh, in, in general about this activity, coordination activity, about uh, your concerns and suggestions and this is why feedback form is included in uh, the workshop materials that you received. So. Uh, please fill this form before you leave this uh, room. Uh, and uh, any suggestions or comments are very welcome also afterwards uh, by email or through this uh, web form. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, we, if uh, we actually are uh, running uh, past uh, the planned deadline, but if you have any uh, questions or immediate comments. Uh, now it's uh, uh, we can spend <laughs> last chance. So we still can extend for a few more minutes. Uh, it seems that it was a long day, but uh, uh, thank you very much for for your interest, for your patience, for your participation, and staying to the end of the workshop. And many thanks to. Uh, uh, our partners, uh, to Jana, uh, uh, European Commission Representation Office, to, to Sila from DJ Connect, to Kadri from U uh, Estonian Language Resource Center, um, and to all of you. Thank you. Yeah, ma jõka pikk lõppjutu ka rääkima. I won't drag this out too long. Thanks for staying with us. It, the day was long and arduous, but I hope it was still interesting and you got some food for thought. There is uh, coffee outside. Please also take uh, your mm, diploma for attendance.